And for more on this, let's bring in our panel. Alex Vogel, former general counsel to the National Republican Senatorial Committee. And Lori Watkins is a former Florida policy director for the 2012 Obama campaign. Welcome to you both. Lori, let me start with you. Uh, you know what the, uh, people are saying, Democrats are saying, that the Mueller report is a roadmap for impeachment. Do you agree? I agree that it could be a roadmap for impeachment should the full uh, congressional delegation, both houses, uh, be able to view the full unredacted version of this report. There were over 900 redactions, seven full pages that were completely um, emitted. Uh, excuse me, omitted from uh, view, and those need to be produced, and that needs to be under review by Congress so they can then move forward. And we'll see if they did get those. So, Alex, uh, we have Elizabeth Warren, we just saw, calling for impeachment proceedings to begin. Do you think they will? Uh, so I, I saw uh, Senator Warren's comments. I don't think she's the last uh, of the 2020 candidates. I actually think a lot of them are going to go there, and I think they're going to be dragged there uh, by AOC and many on the left. Um, and the real issue is you have uh, Speaker Pelosi, arguably uh, maybe the most powerful Democratic speaker in modern history, uh, who's forced between making a very bad political decision uh, and, uh, and rolling uh, her activist base. So it's not an enviable position from her side. Um, it's not clear which way they go, but there's a lot of cross pressure. Even Mr. Nadler is a little more circumspect than uh, some of the activists. Uh, you talk about uh, Ms. Pelosi and Nadler. Let's listen to exactly what they have to say about that. Here, here, here are both discussing this very issue. We do not leave the country to criticize the President of the United States. We may have differences on policy and that, but we're not there to criticize. We believe that the first article, Article 1, the legislative branch, has a responsibility of oversight of our democracy, and we will exercise that. You don't bring uh, an impeachment procedure unless, one, you think you can prove that the president's committed impeachable offenses, two, they're serious impeachable offenses, not just, you know, and three, and this is a more prudential thing, I don't think you should bring a, 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 uh, an impeachment proceeding unless you believe at the, con at the beginning of that proceeding, when you're starting, that you have such strong evidence of such terrible deeds that once that is laid out to the American people, an appreciable fraction of the people who supported the president will agree reluctantly you had to do that. You know, Laurie, they're both being uh, very diplomatic and sober. Uh, the speaker is in Northern Ireland, which is why she uh, said she won't offer criticism when she's out of the country. Do you expect a battle royale, you know, between the progressives, AOC, and others who are going to try to push impeachment, yet the Democratic establishment seems to resist it? Hey, I have full confidence in Speaker Pelosi and her ability to lead um, the party, lead the caucus. I know that she's having a Democratic caucus uh, telephone conference on Monday where possibly that's where they're going to start to hash this out. And I know she's always willing to listen to both sides, but this is a, a political issue. It could turn into a real battle, and she, as well as the other Democrats, have to decide how they want to play this for 2020. And could they, of course, have hearings, you know, short of impeachment, as they likely will, when they do call Mueller and others to testify, Lori, where they can go through these issues. They can go through those 10 points that Mueller cited as possible evidence of obstruction of justice by the president. I agree. Congress, leaders in Congress should continue to push for um, special counsel Mueller to come and testify before Congress, as well as continue to push for a full and open release, unredacted um, version of this report. So members of Congress, um, I, whether or not it goes to the full public or not, but members of Congress deserve to see that entire unredacted report. So, Alex, there likely there will be hearings on this. What do you expect? Uh, look, what I expect is they're going to keep dragging this out as long as they can. The, the problem they have is, uh, thanks to their own messaging along the way for the last two years, plus the money spent by people like Mr. Steyer, arguing that if we just have to wait for the Mueller report, we'll have the facts, we'll be able to, to work on this. And now they're going to be forced to say, well, let's just keep having this conversation and dig a little deeper. I don't think the American people have any uh, more confidence that Mr. Nadler uh, or Mr. Schiff 
Schiff or others on the partisan side are going to do a better job investigating what Mr. Mueller did. Um, so I think it's a fool's errand and one that ultimately will be politically damaging to them. But then, Alex, what about the critics who say, oh, we're deeply troubled? You know, by the president's behavior that's revealed in this, uh, between uh, supposedly ordering uh, Dom again, the White House counsel, to go fire Mueller, uh, uh, telling uh, Corey Leandowski to lean on then Attorney General Sessions and the like, allegations of lies, misdeeds, Sarah Sanders uh, uh, misleading the White House press corps, uh, you know, on that one occasion uh, specifically, and the fact that the president was not exonerated. I mean, I read you the exact words. This report does not conclude that the president committed a crime. There's the good news. It also does not exonerate him. They're very clear, uh, and they did not bring charges, not because they said they didn't have proof. They didn't bring charges because of the uh, Department of Justice rules prevented that. Well, I think the key language is what you started with there, which is deeply troubled. Uh, that's not the standard for impeachment. Um, so if the Democrats think that politically speaking, um, they've got evidence of high crimes and misdemeanors that they would like to pursue, um, they are within their rights to do that. It's clear, based on the leadership's reaction and some of the more uh, cooler heads, um, that they don't think that's a, a productive uh, mechanism for them in light of Mr. Mueller's investigation and in light of how that's likely to play out. And, and, and uh, Laurie, uh, deeply troubled certainly could be something voters could consider when they go to the polls. Deeply troubling, um, I, I agree with Alex, is not cause for um, impeaching a president. That's why, again, I will say that it is imperative that a full unredacted version of the report be um, viewed by members of Congress and they have access to that and have special counsel Mueller come to testify before Congress. Any questions that they have, they can ask of him and they can get them answered there. If no one's afraid of the information, then they should be more than happy and willing to open up the kimono and let everyone see what's inside that report. Well, we'll uh, see if uh, Mr. Mueller does indeed appear, as he likely will, and all eyes will be riveted on that session. Alex and Laurie, thank you for joining us this afternoon.